Good day everyone, I am Kyle Angel Kakoli from Bachelor of Secondary Education major in Sciences. And in this video, let's take a look at the different types of rocks. Before we moving on to our topic for today, let's have first our learning objectives. At the end of this topic, you will be able to define and identify igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rock with regards to the rock cycle. Second, identify the specific types of rocks within the three categories. And lastly, understand how a rock can move through the different stages of rocks. They make up this famous formation called Half Dome or the Smaller Rock Formation. And they can be small or seen in canyons. Rocks are all around us. A solid rock is a naturally occurring and it's made up of minerals like shells. Now rocks can be divided into three basic types of rocks depending on how they are formed. These are the igneous, sedimentary, and the metamorphic rocks. Each of these rocks are formed by physical changes such as melting, cooling, eroding, compacting, or deforming that are part of the rock cycle. So let's take a look first about igneous rocks. Igneous rocks derive from the Latin word for fire. Igneous rocks are formed when the molten hot materials cools and solidifies. Igneous rocks can also be made into a couple different ways. When they are formed inside the earth, they are called intrusive or platonic igneous rocks. If they are formed outside the earth or on top of the earth's crust, they are called extrusive or volcanic igneous rocks. Granite and diorite are common examples of intrusive rocks. They have a coarse texture with large mineral grains, indicating that they spend thousands or millions of years cooling down inside the earth, in which a time course that allowed large minerals crystallize to grow. Alternatively, rocks like basalt and obsidian have very small grains and a relatively fine texture. This happens because when magma erupts to lava, it cools more quickly than it would be stayed inside the earth, giving crystals less time to form. Obsidian cools into volcanic grains so quickly when the ejected that the grains are impossible to see with the naked eye. On the other hand, extrusive igneous rocks can also be vesicular or holy texture. This happens when the ejected magma still has gases inside of it. So when it cools, the gas bubbles are trapped and end up giving the rock a bubbly texture. An example of this would be a pumice. Active volcanoes like this one on Reunion Island east of Madagascar in Indian Ocean forms a type of igneous rock in which it is an extrusive or volcanic igneous rock because they are formed when hot material cools and solidifies. Now the second type of rocks is the sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are formed from pieces of other existing rock or organic material. There are three different types of sedimentary rocks. These are the clastic, organic or the biological, and the chemical. Clastic sedimentary rocks are like sandstone formed from clust or other pieces from rock. Organic sedimentary rocks like coal formed from hard, biological material like plants, shells, and bones that are compressed into rock. The formation of clastic and organic rocks begins with the withering or breaking down of the exposed rock into small fragments. Through the process of erosion, these fragments are removed from their source and transported by wind, water, ice, 
or biological activity to a new location. Once the sediment settles somewhere and enough of it collects, the lowest layers become compacted so tightly that they form solid rock. Chemical sedimentary rocks like limestone, halite, and flint forms through a process of chemical precipitation. A chemical precipitate is a chemical compound, say for instance, a calcium carbonate, salt, and silica that forms when the solution is dissolved usually in water and evaporates and leaves the compound behind. This occurs as water travels through Earth's crust, withering the rock and dissolving some of its minerals and transporting elsewhere. These dissolved minerals are precipitated when the water evaporates. And lastly, the third type of rock is the metamorphic rocks. When we say metamorphic rocks, are rocks that have been changed from their original form by immense of heat and pressure. Metamorphic rocks have two classes, the foliated and the non-foliated. When a rock with flat or elongated minerals is put under immense pressure, the minerals line up in layers creating foliation. Foliation is the aligning of elongated or platinum minerals like hornblende or mica perpendicular to the direction of pressure that is applied. An example of this transformation can be seen with granite, an igneous rock. Granite contains long and platinum minerals that are not initially aligned, but when enough pressure is added, those minerals shift to all point in the same direction while getting squeezed into flat sheets. When granite undergoes this process, like a tectonic plate boundary, it turns into gneiss. Non-foliated rocks are formed the same way, but they do not contain the minerals that tend to line up under pressure and thus do not have the layered appearance of foliated rocks. Sedimentary rocks like bituminous coal, limestone, and sandstone Given enough heat and pressure, can turn into non-foliated metamorphic rocks like anthracite, coal, marble, and quartzite. Non-foliated rock can also form by metamorphism, which happens when magma comes in contact with the surrounding rock. And now, let's find out and understand how a rock can move through different stages of rock cycle. Rocks are slowly but constantly changing in something known as a rock cycle. The rock cycle begins with magma or hot melted rock deep beneath the earth's surface. This magma becomes crystallized, becoming igneous rock. These rocks begin to erode or break down into small pieces because of wind, water, or other forces. The small fragments of rock are carried away as sediment when water passes over them and are deposited in layers which eventually become sedimentary rocks. Then some sedimentary rocks are pushed below the surface due to the tectonic activity where they are exposed to heat and pressure and transforming them into metamorphic rocks. Now, if the rocks are buried ever deeper, they may melt and form magma starting the cycle all over again. Of course, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks can be eroded into sediment and igneous rock can become metamorphic rock or lava. But one way or another, rocks all over the world keep changing from one form to the next. Hey guys, I hope you've learned a lot from this video. Thank you and God bless.